channel um, if you're new here welcome um, if you couldn't tell by the title I'm going to be sharing my secrets on how to be consistent in your off season because you know your off season is the most important part I personally think it's more important that more important than the prep um, if you're trying to constantly improve from show to show so I've had one very successful off season before this last, my first prep. So I'm gonna be sharing my tips and tricks along with my back workout. I'm gonna voice over my back workout while I share my secrets. But before we get into the back workout, I'm gonna give a little update about my, my off season because this is the point of this series of hashtag road to grow. Um, so in my last check-in, my fats were decreased, which I'm very happy about because I was eating over 100 grams of fat, and it was just a lot for my stomach. I'm not a very <clears throat> fats person. Like, I like fats, but I don't eat a lot of them. So right now they're at 65. My digestion has drastically improved since then. Um, my next check-in is Monday, so we'll see if my weight dropped because I was having big weight jumps because of it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned I got my blood work done and I got it back. Everything was good, as good as it can be after a prep, um, hormone wise. So that was pretty good. But um, I did my caffeine cleanse for a week. So today I had coffee this morning, only a shot of espresso my coffee machine's broken in my apartment so that's about only 90 milligrams of caffeine I believe so I'm doing stimulant free pre-workout today because I'm doing legs or I'm not doing legs so I don't really need pre-workout would it be nice yes but I don't need it so stimulant free but yeah overall my stomach feels flatter after lowering the fats um, it's a big drop, so I'm curious to see, like, I don't really, I'm not one of those girls who chronically checks their weight. I just don't like to. I know there's people who weigh themselves every single day. I don't like doing that, so <laughs> I feel like it freaks me out when I do that. So I'm going to check my weight on my next check-in, but I check it every 10 days. It's just not... For me, I just don't, I don't know. A lot of people like to do it so that they can see the fluctuations, but it's like, I'd rather just not know, you know? I don't really care. But, yeah, overall, we're, we're going pretty well, though. Um, my glutes are just, they just feel huge. Um, I measured them the other day, because, you know, I was just curious. Um, and they were, I think, like 38 and a half inches almost pushing 39 inches so that's pretty cool because I feel like every it's like such a thing girls are chasing like 40 inch glutes I feel like that's like a recent thing I don't know but I feel like everybody's like raving about 40 inch glutes and it's like damn I'm almost there but that's about all the update I have about that my workouts, I feel freaking strong. If you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. Um, I posted my some some of the exercises I did for my glute workout this past week, and I was hip thrusting three plates like slow and controlled. Like there was a one and a half second, two second pause at the top, and I did it for like ten, and I did two sets of that. So my strength's definitely there. Um, and I, I'm feeling more comfortable 
with the fluff, even though I'm not like fat or anything, but like, um, I feel like I've spent a good enough amount of time, amount of time right now not shredded, so like, I'm finally like, okay, like, I don't look bad, you know? And I feel like the uh, drop in fats really helped because I was looking back at this one picture of me and my waist. Like, it didn't look big, but I could just tell for me I looked, like, bloated. And I just felt bloated all the time because I was eating fats, like, pre-workout. And I, I had fats with every single one of my meals, and it was, like, a lot of fats. One of my meals had, like, 100 grams of avocado and, like, 30 grams of almonds. And I was like, this is just too much. <laughs> I felt like, like just gross. So, I'm really excited about that. But yeah, I'm working out back and biceps today. Um, I've been loving my new split. I don't know if I told you guys that I, I do three days on rest, three days on rest. So I was doing six days in a row during prep. Um, it just wasn't really working for me anymore. I just didn't like it. So, three days on, one day rest. I really like it. Like, I don't have set rest days. But it's kind of nice because if I ever want to work out with somebody, you know when you have your set days you hit something, like if you just don't align with somebody, you're just never going to align. So now I'm just super flexible, you know? Not that I work out with people a lot, but like you get the gist. But we're going to go to the gym. It's very beautiful outside. Blue skies, starting to get cooler out. Um, yeah, let's go work out some back and biceps. And I'm gonna give you guys my secret sauce for staying consistent in your off season and not falling off, I guess. Um, and I say consistent, not how to stay motivated because I don't know that answer. I don't know the answer to that question. But I'll give you guys the outfit of the day. So these shorts, are from Paragon, and they literally feel like Lulu's, like they're so cozy. And then this is just like a random Toxic Angels shirt that I got for free when I ordered my suit. So without further ado, let's get into the workout. All right, tip number one, you got to evaluate your mindset going into the off season. So instead of, I can't wait to be shredded, or I can't be can't wait to compete again, say I can't wait to build muscle, or I can't wait to get stronger. You gotta go in with a better mindset because your body will follow whatever you tell it to. Tip number two, evaluate your why. Why are you competing in bodybuilding? If you're doing this for some sort of external validation, like a trophy or a good job, or you look so good, this is not the sport for you at the end of the day. Tip number three, and I know this sounds cheesy, you've probably already heard it, but how bad do you want your goal? Whatever it is within competing or in just in life, how bad do you really want it? Because chances are, if you want something bad enough, you are going to work to get it and you need to evaluate this when you're going into your off season and you don't want to be consistent as consistent as you were in your prep all right tip number four is to set a realistic timeline and why i say realistic maybe talk with a coach somebody you trust and it doesn't have to be an exact date but just like when you're on prep, you have this date in mind and it's super helpful when you're on prep because you have this date, I gotta step on stage on this date. So if you have a rough estimate of when you're gonna start your next prep, it'll be so much more motivating to give it your all. Tip number five is a pretty obvious one, but track your workouts, track your progress. Take your check-ins, don't slack on the check-ins just because you don't like how you look at a higher body fat. Get used to it because that's where you're going to grow the most and that's how your body is healthy. So track how you're getting stronger within each workout and each session. Um, maybe your coach gives you a workout plan or you set your own for yourself. I know for at least me, it's super motivating to see me lifting heavier weight each week or increasing the time under tension each week. Have a free meal. 
plan your free meals do something fun each week when you do them my boyfriend and i like to plan a whole night out of it do like a little date night each week depending on if you get them how many you get them per month or however it works Tip number seven is if the nutrition part is the hardest part for you, try different seasonings or cook your food differently. Um, I love to grill food personally, or maybe try different types of whole foods, different protein sources. Tip number eight is to set a new routine for yourself. So you have this regimented routine and prep, why would you just fall off of having a routine in your off season? Um, Make it fun. Make it exciting. Lastly, embrace the extra body fat you have on you and what it's doing for you. Nine times out of ten, you're probably stronger. You're probably excited to work out again. Um, You have energy. And embrace having a butt. I mean, that was probably my favorite part of reverse dieting, getting my butt and my energy back. And when you start to get impatient, just remind yourself... What's made in the dark of the off-season will come to light once you go on stage. So you're taking this long improvement season. The next time you go on stage, don't you want to look crazy improved? The answer is probably, hopefully, yes. So take this as seriously as you would a prep and enjoy your life. You don't have to be prep, prep, prep all the time. So that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you took some something from this video um learn something that you could maybe apply to your off seasons or your bodybuilding journeys um and just remember the off season is literally so important so a lot of people i would see will get eight weeks into a off season and they'll get uncomfortable, or maybe even like three months, and they'll be ready to cut again. Now, it is a little bit different for people like pros and stuff that don't necessarily need to make huge changes, but for us amateurs and more entry-level beginner bodybuilders or even bottom-tier pros, you're going to have to take a longer off-season to see the muscle growth you want unless you want to keep cutting down and not being big enough. I mean, it'll just be more annoying because imagine if I were to go into a prep next month, like I just started growing, you know? I'm just at a point where my body is at a homeostasis, so it would be such a waste of time for me to go into a prep right now. So that's basically the main point I'm trying to get across here. Don't sell yourself short by selling your improvement season short. Um, Because why would you want to do a whole entire prep and then barely make any improvements? It doesn't make sense. Um, But I actually went to the zoo today because it's 20 minutes away from where I live. And it was so much fun. If you don't know me, I love monkeys. I just, they're so cute. So they have like a whole habitat of just different monkeys there, all sectioned off, and that was like my favorite part. But I went there and I got this cute little monkey. I just look how cute he is. It's a little orangutan. And then uh, my boyfriend and I always do these little strip pictures when we go somewhere that has one. So we did that. And then... We got some cute little fun pictures um, taken. We just had to. Like, come on. We don't always buy these kind of things every time we go to places like that. So we were like, why not? And my stepmom, since she works for the Florida Aquarium, I get in there for free. So it was really fun. And we got a lot of steps in. Today was a rest day for me. Um, The best time to get a coach is not when you're 20 weeks out from a show you want to do or 16 weeks out from a show you want to do or 12 weeks out. My biggest recommendation is to find yourself a coach well before you want to do a show so that they can, you know, you can discuss a timeline, say, hey, like, 
you're not gonna be able to prep in 20 weeks. You don't have enough muscle. Um, so it's another thing you have to consider is hiring a coach that will take your improvement season as seriously as you should be taking it. Um, it's not a time to mess around. Obviously, it's it's a, it's a time to do things that you may not be able to do while you're prepping for a show, but you really should be treating it with the same respect you would a prep. Um, like, I would not go to the zoo on prep, I'm sorry. Uh, it's like 100 degrees in Florida right now, so just imagine shredded 100 and whatever 15 pound Angie walking around the zoo. That wouldn't have happened. Um, so that's an example. Um, but yeah, hiring a coach is my number one recommendation. Um, if you're one of those very beginner bodybuilders, uh, because it'll help you keep uh, stay accountable. It'll help the coach learn your body so that when you guys do prep, um, the coach is able to know how you respond to certain things because you've been working together for X amount of time. And it helps with accountability if you need that account accountability in your off season as well. And you need a good foundation before you compete. You can't just lift for a month or two months or even a year and decide, yep, I'm gonna start prep. That's just not how it works. Um, even for a bikini, they may not look big, but they're big, they're dense. So yeah, um, and I'm not even just saying this because I'm a coach, it's just my biggest recommendation. So, but if you are looking for a coach and you'd like to chat with me, I'll leave my application below and we can hop on a call and I can show you everything that I offer as a coach. Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap up this video. Like this video, um, comment below your favorite animal um, or what you want to see more of on this uh, channel. And subscribe because it really helps me out. And I like to connect with you guys. It's fun. And I'll leave my other socials down below. I'm usually pretty active on Instagram. Other ones not so much. Uh, but I'll see you guys next week for another fun little video. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you're following along, thank you. But I will see you next week. Peace.